Hi everyone and happy Earth Day. I am here outside of my Eagle Peak greenhouse and I wanted to give you a quick update for Earth Day about how things have been working with this little experiment that I've been doing uh, over the past winter. So as you can see, I'm currently outside the greenhouse and today I want to show you some things that worked in the greenhouse and some things that didn't work. Anyway, stay with me. Well, hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. I actually filmed this video in two parts. The first part that you're going to see was filmed in March on one of the first sunny and warm days that we had. The sun is a little bright and I was squinting through most of the video, but that's okay. You're not here to see me. You want to see what's going on inside the greenhouse. So I'll show you that part of the video first. Then we will jump to what's currently going on inside the greenhouse to keep you updated on how things are working. And in honor of Earth Day, I just want to remind people that we have to be good stewards of our earth. So plant some trees, spend some time gardening, get outside, support your local uh, parks and recreation areas, and just, you know, try to enjoy the beauty that we have around us. All right, let's jump into the video. Well, hi everyone, this is Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. Today, I wanted to give you a quick update on how things went in the greenhouse this winter. Today is one of the first warm and sunny days that we have had, and currently the temperature is 101 degrees here in the greenhouse. So I do have the door open and I have the window open uh, so that some fresh air can come in pollinators can visit and that kind of thing. It is still a mess in here from the winter, but I wanted to give you a quick update. So as many of you know, across the country this year, there was a lot of cold weather. In December uh, at our house, we had temperatures down around 15 degrees for a number of nights. And we also just yesterday had temperatures down at 25 degrees and so uh, even with all of the work that I did out here in the greenhouse, I was really only able to keep the temperature up about anywhere from five to eight degrees. And when it gets down to 19, the only thing that's going to stay alive out here are the really hardy things. So I want to show you a little bit about what I did uh, to try to keep things uh, warm out here um, make some plans for doing some cleanup and some rearranging we've got about two more months before i can plant things out into the garden safely so i am going to be starting some seeds out here and bringing some of my house plants and my ferns and that kind of thing back outside and trying to get things started so that i can get a jump on this season all right well the first thing that you see uh, right here in the corner behind me is this vinyl back um, tablecloth that actually is Christmas themed doesn't really matter what the theme is but what I did is I strung a clothesline wire around the inside and then I hung uh, this vinyl tablecloth up against there to kind of be an extra wind protector and block uh, some of the cold air from coming in right up against my plants. I'm going to turn the camera around and let you see what it looks like behind the table. Okay, so you can see kind of my work table here. And again, you see that uh, red plaid vinyl tablecloth that is hanging. I put it in front of the window. That is the north side window. And I knew that lots of cold air would be coming in through the little gaps around that window. So I wanted to add some extra protection there. I simply hung that tablecloth up with some clothespins and actually it goes all the way down. Let me drop you down here below underneath the table as well. Again, this is on the north side and I had a lot of plants stashed underneath of this particular table. 
Now you also see some buckets of plant water there. I had those pushed up against the tablecloth to create yet another barrier between uh, some of the uh, plants that I had in here. This is one, pardon my uh, cloth there for cleaning. This is one of the plants that I overwintered in the greenhouse. It is a smoke bush and you can see that it is starting to bud out and that makes me very, very happy. Here's the tag for the smoke bush. I have wanted a smoke bush for a long time. I found one at the end of the season last year and I thought that it might be better in the greenhouse uh, than outside and I'm glad that I did because of this very cold weather that we had. Here I have a hookra that is growing and my lemon coral sedum made it through the winter and that's absolutely beautiful together and I have some Swiss chard growing there and I have some other things growing up here. I have some catnip for the kitty cats. My little dish of succulents is growing nicely. I even have a uh, perennial chrysanthemum that's starting to grow back there. I have lettuce that's growing. This is romaine lettuce. And look how beautiful these strawberry plants are. They are uh, doing great. Hopefully we will have a few strawberries here soon. My rosemary bush is still alive and even the hostas are starting to come up. Again, these are hostas that I got on clearance at the end of the season last year. Proven winner. This one is called Shadowland Diamond Lake. This one is also Shadowland Diamond Lake. And I have one third one. That is a guacamole. So those should be fun. I'm slowly learning that I can grow hosta here in pots because the deer will just eat them as soon as they pop up if I grow them in the ground. Okay, so back to winterizing. Uh, this tablecloth here worked absolutely great as a barrier. And then you'll remember that I also had the strings of lights around that were set on a timer and I could set those to come on and to go off at various times during the evening. Uh, you know, the coldest part of the night is right before sunrise. So I could have them come on and go off. And in addition to these strings of lights that are around, I also had a couple of these uh, clamp-on lamps that had 100 watt bulbs in them. And they were also on the timer and would come on uh, as needed, okay? Now, you'll see here in the corner, I have another stack of vinyl tablecloths, and I want to show you what I did with those. In addition to uh, some of these old sheets that I had, uh, that I used to use for different projects, for forts for the kids, and that's why they're kind of painted like stone. Um, and what I did on this side is I strung another uh, clothesline type rope across this yellow twine that I have here and I just tied it from one end of the frame to the other end of the frame there and I let it hang down kind of low over the pots that were there okay all right now I'm going to show you how I draped these uh, sheets and things over that to add extra protection but before I do that I want you to notice on this side, I added a layer of thick cardboard up against that wall as well. Okay, so I had the cardboard standing up like that. Again, up to about the window height, just to add an extra layer of protection to insulate those pots that I have down there. All right, so I think you can see here that uh, this rope goes across from one end of the greenhouse to the other. And all I would do is take these sheets, which add a very nice layer of protection, and I would simply drape them from one end to the other over top of these plants. Like so. And then I could use clothespins to pin them up in place. 
Okay, so that was one layer of protection. Then I would take one of the vinyl tablecloths that I have with the flannel backing here, and I would do exactly the same thing. So I would spread it out as long and as, as wide as I could get it, and I would drape it over. One in the front, like this, and then also take a second one and drape it from the back. Going outside of that cardboard, so we have the wall of the greenhouse, the vinyl backed tablecloth, and then the cardboard. And it would come up and make a tent like this. So the plants are sandwiched underneath of this. And this was adding about five degrees uh, to the protection of the plants. So if I had nights that got down into the 30s, these plants were protected. If I had nights that were going lower than that, I would also turn the lights on and add that extra warmth that way, okay? In this manner, using this combination of layers of protection with these vinyl back tablecloths and the sheets that I have, I was able uh, to keep a large number of things uh, in good shape out here. Now, did I keep everything? Of course not. <laughs> When you get down to the 20s or the teens, you're not going to be able to keep things like the Boston ferns that I had in here earlier. Um, they're just not gonna make it through that kind of weather. So I did take the very soft, tender things. I put them in my basement or in my dining room for those very, very cold months that we had. I am gonna be bringing them back out here because uh, like I said at the top of the video, we have about two more months before I can safely uh, leave things outside and I want to be able to get those things started uh, to being used to the sunshine again and to harden off and maybe get a little advanced growing on them. So the next time you see this greenhouse, it's going to look very different. It's not just going to have really, really cold tolerant plants in it. I'm going to go ahead and bring those extra things back out, fill it up and let myself enjoy this greenhouse for the next couple of months. All right, well, I just want to give you an update on how I kept things warm in here. And um, hopefully you've gotten a tip or two. And I really have enjoyed this experiment of having this greenhouse. I'm now trying to decide if, as the spring and summer comes on, if I want to relocate this, which is a very easy thing to do because it's very much like an easy up tent. Um, it's called the Eagle Peak um, 10 by 10. And I, I have a video about when I put it up, I'll link that up above, but I think that, that maybe for the summertime, I would like to move it somewhere and put it up so that it has some shade and some extra protection so that I might be able to grow some things like, um, tomatoes and cucumbers and things without having the wildlife get to them. So this would kind of be a little fenced in area for me, uh, that might get, might work out pretty well, might be worth an experiment uh, for the summer. So we'll see. I'll keep you posted on that. Well, I'm standing here inside of the greenhouse now and you can still see that I do have my stack of uh, protecting tablecloths and sheets behind me because the last frost date was April 15th, which was yesterday. However, the way that our weather has been going, I don't really trust it. So I'm going to leave those out here until I am sure that we're not going to have any more cold weather. But I want to give you a peek around the greenhouse and just show you what's been happening. I have been planting some seeds. I did bring my ferns and things back out. So let's take a look. All right, so here you see one of my ferns is back out here. It has started to grow and put on some new leaves. It does need to be cleaned out and get all of that dead uh, underbrush out, but you know, that's a project for another day. 
Moving on, we've got a lot of things growing under here. The catnip is growing nicely. There's actually two pots of catnip and the succulents are really taking off. That mom is growing like a weed. I am going to have to start pruning him back because I don't want him to bloom early in the season. I even have some lettuce seeds coming up here. I was able to scatter some lettuce seeds in and amongst the uh, hearts of romaine that are growing here. And these are starting to come in nicely. So I'm excited about that. Now jumping over here, I did some seed planting of some giant zinnias. And you see they are starting to put on their first set of true leaves, which is exciting. I also planted some Liertus, and you can see that all of that is coming up. So I am excited about that. At my local garden center, I did find some of the proven winter summer annuals that are already starting to come out. So I went ahead and picked up one or two of those for hanging baskets. So they're in here keeping themselves safe. And then behind these cuttings of my red twig dogwoods, which are all starting to root, I am growing if we peek over here, the back row is coleus. So all those little round leaves are coleus plants. And the front row is spinach. So pretty soon we will have some spinach leaves that we can harvest for our salads. I also brought out this uh, pepper plant right here. It looks a little rough. It uh, had a hard time during the winter, but I did take it in the basement and it is growing new leaves. So I think it is going to survive just fine. Now talked about those strawberry plants in the first half of this video. Look at this. It has strawberries growing all over it. The bees have been in here pollinating and the plants are just looking lovely. And we are going to have some strawberries soon. I think that's fantastic. In this pot down here, <laughs> I planted some old tomatoes at the end of last summer. Actually, I just threw them in the pot. You can see one of the little orange ones there on the side. And those tomatoes have broken down and have started to grow. So look at all of these seedlings that I have that I can transplant into other pots and and grow my own tomatoes this summer yum yum also at the garden center they're starting to bring things out even though it is very very early this is uh, mandevilla plants uh, that i want to be able to plant in the yard and having this greenhouse here so that i can keep them warm on those cool nights is great down there in those two pots you see onions. I planted onion sets back in March and they are all just coming up and growing beautifully. Can't wait to see what's growing underneath the ground. And then over here in this great big pot, in this great big pot over here, last year I had cannas growing. And as you can see, those cannas were able to survive the winter. I did not take these big pots into the basement because they are too heavy for me to lift. So I just covered them well and the bulbs, which are normally tropical bulbs, did very well here in the greenhouse in zone seven. So I'm thankful about that. My elephant ears are also doing well, coming up, starting to put on new growth. I think that's fantastic. And that smoke bush that I was showing you earlier, look at the leaves that it has already. Isn't that beautiful color? Now in these three buckets over here, I planted potatoes. I got some potato sets and a russet potato that was growing its own self in the pantry. I cut them up and put them in here. And what I do is as the green starts to show, like it's doing now, I take more soil and cover that, that green part up so I get all of that depth of potato growth. I think that's really, really fun. I was successful with that last year. Very happy. Then over here in this corner, again, there is another big pot of cannas that survived the winter and some more elephant ear. So I'm very excited that they are back because I love the tropical look of elephant ear. On to a little bit more shopping that I have done. I have some coleus plants that I was able to find 
on sale or for sale already. And I love the red coleus, this one here. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I like to put those on my deck. So that's what that's gonna go, um, that's, that's what they're going to do. And those red coleus are going to be paired with these white New Guinea impatience, which I think are really, really pretty. Okay. Then down here on the floor, sorry to be moving you back and forth, but down here on the floor in these two trays, I have more Laertes that I am growing. And you can see almost every cell has bulbs that are starting to come up. They are going to be tall purple and white flowers that I'm going to put in my new bird garden. So I'm excited about that. Speaking of the bird garden, I also got some snapdragons and some coreopsis and some creeping flocks that is going to go in that bird garden and the rudbeckia or echinacea that I overwintered there on the ground is also going to go in that garden. So I think that is exciting. So let me back up a little bit here and give you a broader view so that you can see. So you can see from one side of the greenhouse to the other. And then across the back. And then on to the other side. Having the six foot work table in here has been very helpful. And I have also liked the addition of these uh, small patio tables that I put for an extra level. I think that's worked really great. And underneath of the patio table creates some nice shady spots for some of the plants that need a little bit more shade. And if you look down here on the ground underneath of this table, you also see some nice shady spots for like that hosta that's back there. This one here. This is the guacamole hosta that I showed you before. You can see how much it has grown. And I have some more daffodils down here and a new pepper plant. Some impatience, even overwintered. And there's that Swiss chard and a dahlia, believe it or not. And these jugs for bringing water out so that I can water the plants. Well, I really have to say that I have thoroughly enjoyed this greenhouse. I've enjoyed working in it. I've enjoyed coming out and sitting. Uh, I've enjoyed being out here working while it was raining. Um, it's just been a really great experiment. And like I said at the end of the first video, I do think that I'm going to try to put this up somewhere and grow those tomatoes and grow maybe some cucumbers and peppers in here. And I can keep the wildlife away from it because I can control uh, you know, what is able to come in and out by opening and closing the doors of the greenhouse. Um, and I think they're going to be a little bit afraid of the structure too. So I'm hoping that they will stay away and I will be able to grow some great things in here. I'm going to have to move it to a different location because this location um, won't work for the summertime, but that's okay. I have plenty of spots around the yard that I can put this greenhouse. And when I do move it, I'll take the lights down because I don't think I'll need those to keep things warm in the summertime. Uh, in fact, I may have to replace them with a fan. Well, I just wanted to come out and give you an update about what's been happening in the greenhouse, what I've been able to grow out here, what seedlings I've been starting, and how I've been able to keep things protected from the winter weather that we've been having. Anyway, if you've liked anything or learned anything in this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That really does help out the channel. Think about subscribing if you haven't already. And here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I like to plan in my greenhouse. Until next time. Okay, bye.